Today, we're going to break down and analyze the body language of an irrational bot. Greg, let's tell us about the videos we're going to watch. Well, this case is an interesting one. Narush's wife disappears in late July. Her work sends the police officers to, to do a, a, a check and make sure she's okay. Narush answers the door. That's the first video. In the second set of videos, we're going to find him talking to the local news. Now, his wife's body has not been found, but he has been charged, and he is in prison at the moment awaiting trial. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm officer at Timon Park, please. Uh, we're looking for uh, Miss Manta Kafle. Yeah, we see, like, uh, on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, she left, and then she says she's going to go either New York or Texas, and then she left, uh, like, uh, she had the phone, and then she destroyed that phone, and then she left. So she, she destroyed the phone and she left. She yeah. said she was going to New York. Yeah, our sister, like uh, one of our sister. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any other contact information? Yeah, I, I like she has a different, different three phones. I do have like a two phone numbers, one phone number, somebody other receiving, one another for, uh, uh, contact number for the New York I do have. Okay, can you show me that? Please, uh, can you show me that on numbers? Can we get those phone numbers from you? Yeah, we just want to see if she's okay because we have an employer calling. To Hi. No, me. Did she say why she left? Yeah, because, you know, like, uh, we are about to separate and then the home inspection come here to, I'm about to sell the home. So, you know, like, she want to say, like, okay, I want to go, you know, with my sisters. And then she used to work uh, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay. And then sometimes she, I don't know where... <laughs> You can come inside or I can come outside. Is this up to you, sir? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like, uh, she used to live in a false house. I don't know the exact address. I know the building because, you know, I see noticed there because, you know, I saw her email mm -hmm. and then one place over there. And then I don't know somewhere in Manassas because on the 8th, I, I think like on the 8th, she started a job. Last this month? No, no. Yeah, last month. Sorry. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. On the 8th. So, you know, I'm not working since that. She so say like, you know, she going to be stay there and then once she going to be everything settled down, she mm -hmm. will take the baby. She not going to leave the baby with me. That's what she okay. said. I know the building in Falls Church where she was. Still, she is living over there or Texas because I already conversation with the, her sister. She just did not reply me and then, you know, she was asking me and then her mom and then her mom is also asking for me. I don't know where is she. All right, Greg, what do you got? This is a really good one because we talk about in the uh, true crime workshop that Scott and I have, we talk about this thing called liar's loop. And there's a method to how people lie. You know, the, you need trigger and then you have to fabricate information and then you will have to pitch that and then you have to defend it and you have to deconflict it. Well, you, have, you also deconflict before you go into pitch in your own head. What we're seeing here is a guy who is way ahead of himself in liar's loop. He's running down a list of things. He's rehearsed what he needs to say. But he didn't expect to have this adrenaline rush when these police showed up. And you can hear him pushing and rushing to give information. He gives information. You always hear people say that someone gives too much information. There's no such thing as too much information. It's too much of the wrong kind of information. Because people are going to tell you what happened. But they don't usually say, hey, can I call her? Well, hold on. You can't because her phone's broken. When you ask that question, they would usually answer. What they don't do is say, hey, she left and she smashed her phone before she left. So he's telling you some of his information up front. In my mind, I'd say, wait a minute, that's an orphan statement. Did I ask you about your phone? Did I ask you about her phone? And then I'd want to know, because you are defending before you need to, you could start asking a whole bunch of questions around, how does she break it? When does she break it? Is the phone still here? What's the phone number? There's a ton of stuff you could do that could push her that way. But as far as these guys are going in pushing ahead, they're always going to get in a bind. You notice a couple of things there. He's... he's um. He thinks he's avoided everything, but he's got these little prayer beads or something going where the worried beads or prayer beads or something. And he's flipping those around with his finger in the beginning. I think that's what it is. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. And then he just gets to this point where he says, that's what she said. Again, what we're seeing is he's getting ahead of himself in the wire's loop. He's trying to defend something they're not asking. That looks awkward and nervous to me. If I were standing at the door, this would be a very different questioning process. But they're doing the right thing. They're asking him, where would she be and all that? Listen to a sentence structure. Look at his body movement. Looks fairly normal. Looks like anyone else. Everybody's going to say, well, he's from a different culture. Well, okay, we're going to compare him against him, not him against Mark or him against Scott. Scott, what do you got? All right. I thought it was, I see what you're saying. I totally agree with you. Because when he comes to the door, 
And, and they start talking. He just leans up against the door and starts puking. Just saying all this stuff. The details it gives in there are just, they're magnificent. He almost goes into microscopic detail and things that, <laughs> that nobody you know, has any question about. Nothing has come up about some of this stuff. He's telling them all about it because he's playing this. He said, okay, here's what I'm going to say. And he stayed up late at night thinking about that, I'm sure. If he's not a psychopath and he did have a problem with it, which I would be on the impression he's not. And he thinks about that when he's in bed. And so he's got his story ready to go, but he hasn't said it out loud. That's why it sounds so weird and odd when it's coming out. Um, and other than the beginning, when he first comes out, he's got that um, breath rates up a little bit. For me, I'm not seeing a lot of stress because he's he, he's focused on getting his story out and getting all the covering all the details. He's given all the details of everything, so he can say, "Okay, here's what happened." Because he, does, because he doesn't know these guys are just the the first responders. In other words, they're the first guys to show up and say, "Hey, what's going on, man? Where's your wife?" And so he doesn't he doesn't know that there's going to be detectives coming later. He's treating them like this is the the last line of defense, which are the first guys to show up, which is awesome. A lot of people. Well, we'll get we'll get to that later. So when she when they ask, so why did she? Uh, did she say why she left? Man, he goes in, into even more detailed um, minutia about what happened and why she's gone. But we don't see any worry. We don't see any stress. His blink rate's super low. Everything gives me the impression that the stress rate here is low, other than the vomiting of all of this information he's given that he wasn't asked about. Chase, what do you got? At the Behavior Panel, our goal is to help you see behind the surface to spot deception and analyze the true intent behind people's words. It is a mission that I personally feel strongly about in, especially in today's bias and overwhelming media landscape. And mainstream media tends to blur the truth and make it really hard to see through the chaos. This is why all of us are proud to have Ground News as a sponsor. They help readers look beyond the mainstream narratives and uncover the patterns in the way that today's news really spins and frames the issues that are going on, or even just fails to cover them in the first place. Like they don't even talk about it. So ground news really helps you see the subtle ways that the media can very heavily shape our public opinion. I'm not even immune to it after studying all this psychology stuff. And it's good to be able to see behind the curtain. I'm actually in the process of writing a book. It's almost done on media brainwashing. And I think they're one of the most practical solutions that I have ever seen. Just scan this QR code or go to ground.news slash TBP to get started. Our viewers enjoy 50% off unlimited access. It's perfect for yourself or as a meaningful gift that sparks some real understanding. Ground News is independent and fully subscriber funded. Join us today in bringing clarity back to the conversation. I agree. And uh, we have very similar notes. I will say one thing. If someone's not been reported missing and the police show up to your door to do a welfare check, you know what you're going to see? Surprise or confusion. Unless somebody's expecting this to eventually happen. And they mentally prepared for it. Good call. We, well, then we see hesitancy. We're seeing rising pitch, which are both on the checklist there. The details of the evidence just coming out right away. And this is a defense strategy versus information. So he's defending himself instead of providing information. So he's going straight out there, like y'all said. Uh, there's no science behind what I'm about to say. Uh, but there is a shitload of experience. And I'm sorry if Scott had to bleep me right there. But we keep shit. Okay. So someone using their hand to explain something, and then all of a sudden it just drops down to their leg, extremely suspicious. And the way that I know this is I've reviewed over maybe 900 body cam, well, body worn camera. They were up here of people in Afghanistan going door to door for an amnesty program, knocking on somebody's door and saying, hey, if you got a bunch of rockets, bombs, grenades, and stuff that explodes, we'll take that from you here. No harm, no foul. You won't be in any trouble. 
And these people lie about it a lot. And the most common, the most common gesture that we saw is these people explaining they don't have anything and their hand would drop down. And I've never seen, it's hard to see it in interrogations because they're seated. You're always seeing people sitting down. When someone's standing up, that's when you're going to see this gravity have more of an effect on the arms. And that's where I personally learned this as in my experience. But I think this is a result of him planning the story out, being so nervous that he unconsciously just goes into this thing without provocation or anything like that. Every detail he's providing is to inject ambiguity and uncertainty, which we've seen before, and we've seen it in guilty people. Every element of this whole thing is about his knowledge. He misses one thing people say when somebody's missing. I don't know. If someone's genuinely missing and they say, well, where are they? All that stuff. They ask all these questions. I have no idea. No idea. And they're okay with that. He's not okay with uh, with any kind of uncertainty. He has to provide more and more information. And that's a huge red flag. So, he may say those words, I don't know, but when someone confidently says, I have no idea, there's credibility to that. When they just say, I don't know. And on the behavioral table of elements, Mark, uh, if you're waiting for this, his score is a 21 within the first 40 seconds of the video. So to give you some context, a score of 12 or more is likely to be deception. He's almost double that using the behavioral table of elements. I just released a, a new version of that, and it's totally free. I'll stick a link below if you want to just download. Mark, what do you got? Wait, yeah. don't forget about Albert Bray's studies about illustrators and how they get smaller and go away when the person is being deceptive. So there's that. I think we've talked about that on here before. So let's. I would add that to what you're saying about the the hands going away or going down, because he showed that, or his study showed that when someone's being honest, their illustrators are more. Are predominant, but when they start to lie or be deceptive, that stress makes those things almost go, almost disappear, and sometimes disappear. There's also a South that. American researcher who wrote about that. It's uh, Dr. Pico de Gallo. Mark, what do you got? He's Mexican. Sorry. <laughs> the so, soup. Uh, yeah, I would, I would call that uh, loss of buoyancy. Loss of buoyancy. It's great to see the hands buoyant most of the time. If I've got a client and I'm working on their trust and credibility. There will be buoyancy in the hands. If I want them to look untrustworthy, they will lose that buoyancy. When they're not sure of what they're saying, they'll lose naturally that buoyancy. He does lose that buoyancy. There's also a lovely piece there. Let's see if I can use the right hand uh, or, or the left hand, which he's using. So he's using probably his uh, less dominant hand to be quite descriptive. We've got some really kind of quite cultural description going on with his with his hand there. And then, then it'll lose its its again, buoyancy, and move towards the back of the head. He does that twice. He does that around, and then sometimes I don't know where you can come inside or you can stay outside. He shifts between three kind of ideas very quickly as he loses faith and trust in what he's saying and um, and uh, adapts at the back of his head. He does that as well on... I. Um, I know the building in full church where she was. I know the building in full church where she was. Again, I think he's not too sure about that. I mean, he knows of a building there, but I think he isn't quite sure that that's where she is. I think he thinks she might be somewhere else. I think he might know. Uh, I think. I think. I, I'm, I'm kind of making this up, but I think he might know where she is. Uh, look, for me, the biggest thing here, for those of you uh, from the UK or abroad who know Vicky Pollard, uh, is that this is a real kind of Vicky Pollard moment of no, but yeah, but no, but yeah, but no. <laughs> the, the person doesn't ask for anything, but he's straight into, and then because, see, and like, you know, there's so many fillers in there as he moves from one narrative to another, to another, to another. As I guess the adrenaline, just as I think you were saying, Greg, the adrenaline ramps up. Yes, he has practiced this. He has stayed awake at night, you know, thinking about what he's going to do. And this is why you stress test. This is why if I've got a client and we're doing trust and credibility, the hands are going to be buoyant. But also, I'm going to run them around the block a few times. I might even get a rolled up newspaper and hit them a lot around the head with it. And then 
get them to do to make their statement because once you can do that under the adrenaline rush you've got used to that he hasn't done it under the, the adrenaline rush he's not got used to it so he is very much in that no but yeah but no but yeah but state of mind um as you might call it greg little bit of squirrel in the road but it's coming across in the in, in the yeah that squirrel going yeah but no but it doesn't know which way to go which way should i go which way should i go but it's it's not really coming out in his gestures here. It's more coming out in the words. The gestures are more about this loss of buoyancy, you know, coming up with other ideas of places for it to go. Anyway, so it's a it's a nice start because there's a lot happening in that in that first one. I think we could spend a whole episode just diving into that, but we got more videos to go. Let's have another. Does anybody does anybody feel like I do that it seems like Chase is trying to copy me by wearing a hat? You know, he's got his on the right way. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm yes. officer at Team Manas Park, please. Uh, we're looking for uh, Miss Manta Kafle. Yeah, we see, like, uh, on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, she left, and then she says she's going to go either New York or Texas, and then she left, uh, like, uh, she had the phone, and then she destroyed that phone, and then she left. So she she destroyed the phone, and she left. She yeah. said she was going to New York. Yeah, our sister, like, uh, one of our sister. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any other contact information? Yeah, I, de- I like see how the different different three phones. I do have like a two phone numbers. One phone number, somebody other receiving. One another for uh, uh, contact number for the New York. I do have. Okay. Can you show me that, please? Uh, can you show me that on phones? Hmm? Can we get those phone numbers from you? Yeah. yeah, we just want to see if she's okay because we have an employer calling. To Hi. No, me. <laughs> Did she say why she left? Yeah, because, you know, like, uh, we are about to separate and then the home inspection come here to, I'm about to sell the home. So, you know, like, she want to say, like, okay, I want to go, you know, with my sisters. And then she used to work uh, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay. And then sometimes she, I don't know where, <laughs> you can come inside or I can come outside. Is this something you, sir? Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, like, uh, she used to live in a false house. I don't know the exact address. I know the building. Because, you know, I see noticed there because, you know, I saw her email mm. and then one place over there. And then I don't know somewhere in Manassas because on the 8th, I, I think like on the 8th, she started a job. Last it, month? No, no. Yeah, last month. Sorry. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the 8th. So, you know, I'm not working since that. She so say like, you know, she going to be stay there. And then once she going to be everything settled down, she mm. will take the baby. She not going to leave the baby with me. That's what she said. I know the building in Falls Church where she was. Still, she is living over there or Texas because I already conversation with the, her sister. She just did not reply me, and then you know she was asking me, and then her mom, and then her mom is also asking for me. I don't know where is she. Okay, so uh, if you could uh, give us the phone numbers, please. We want to see if we can make contact with her. Oh, this is not the first time. Multiple times she go and then come back in a few days. Okay. I I do it with the threat grip. I don't have the phone number for our sister. You know, usually I have a like. Uh, okay. Facebook, but like I don't have her phone number. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So you know, like that's what you know. I replied like two for twenty-three. Usually she works Thursday to Saturday. She works there, and then you know, like it's not like first time she disappear and then come back. I live with my parents over there. She say like, okay, I'm not gonna live with your parents. My parents left back home, and then you know, still a lot of she going. She got the green card already, and then she was about to you know like. Okay. All right, Chase, what do you got? Let's talk about this uh, hand twisting that we're seeing in here. We don't see that a lot in America. I spent a lot of time uh, in this part of the world, and the the body language in Nepal, Pakistan, India is very similar. There's that whole region of the world, even even the southern part of Afghanistan, and this. Essentially, I'm translating this into English as this is a fact, but it's totally meaningless. Like it has no merit and and no anything. And if it's, it's even more meaningless if it's followed by this uh, gesture here. 
And so the behavior is calm and the spew of information is just the tell all by itself. The amount of data that's coming out. He's using the phone to prove to the police that there's a Facebook connection. So the perception here, his perception is that the police are suspicious and he needs to prove his story. I just spoke a little quieter so Scott doesn't yell at me in between the videos for getting too loud. So I'll have to edit the audio. The police gave him no reason to see it this way. No reason to see it that way. There were calm, centered questions for a welfare check. And this is an abnormal response to a single question. So this should be filed in your head for weirdness and red flags for the rest of your life. If I ask a simple question and I get a gigantic response, that's that should be at least interesting to you or you want to dig a little bit more. He even says she disappeared, not that she left or any other word for it. And I think that the daughter is probably calming him down. The daughter is one of the reasons that he's calm. Number one, there's a natural calming effect. Just holding a baby helps our bodies release a feel-good hormone or neurotransmitter called oxytocin, which naturally calm us down. Even if we're feeling guilty or scared, oxytocin can kind of calm us down. It's not as powerful as the other one called GABA, but it can calm you down. Then there's like family grounding. His daughter reminds him of family, makes him feel less alone, eases his anxiety. This is rooted in our ancestral roots for tens of thousands of years. And with a baby in his arms, he's likely to soften up physically, which also makes his stress less obvious to us and harder for us to see. And just holding his daughter alone, I think, uh, helps him keep his emotions in check. So he's showing less guilt or tension on the outside because he's controlling himself around his child, which is programmed into fathers for millennia. Uh, Scott, what do you got? I agree with you. And I think he's also doing that. So he he could be, I think he does later on to uh, show that he's a dad, you know, to make him look more innocent. Like he's got a little baby. I think that connection there, you automatically see that and just keep looking at the little baby. I know I did a lot. While we were watching this, kept thinking, oh, sweet little baby. So sometimes that will run on over to the person holding the baby, I think, depending on how nice they're being to the little child, how they're holding it. But um, he re- he reiterates that this is the first time um, without without pro- without being asked about that. No, this is the first time I haven't known where she was. So they didn't ask about that. And then he continues with the details as to why no one's heard from her. Like you're saying, Chase. Yeah, no, no reason to do that. He's just adding all this stuff on to pile all these things up to make him look innocent because these are the things he's thought of and he has to say, I've got to cover all these points here and he's doing that because he doesn't realize, he's not looking at this from a third person's perspective, only his own from a defensive perspective. So he doesn't see that there's a conversation supposed to happen there. People ask questions and you answer them. This was, at, at this point, about a third of the way through this, I was all in. I was like, yeah, this guy is... I I think that this should be red flags to these guys, and it may be because they get these officers get quieter too. Their their questions get shorter, and they do a whole lot of listening when it comes to this. Mark, what do you got? Uh yeah, totally totally agree. Um, the 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 child is a great tool, great prop, uh, for this. You know, if in doubt, get a get a child or a an animal, and 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 hold on to it tight. I mean, what it's done is it means one of his hands can't move which is really really helpful i mean he could push it further if he wanted to could hold the child he could swing from side to side comfort the child then he's able to do chained elephant we you know out he's, he's able to hide in plain sight around comforting movements with with the child there so so great prop to have if you're trying to be deceptive and not show it um now he normalizes and rationalizes what's going on there this is not the first time he says so he's normalizing it like this happens a lot um rationalizes with stuff like parents and the green card and and adds in a a rationalization of of i mean i don't know where he he's quite going with that but again he's spewing information in order to rationalize normalize but he's creating a level of complexity here that just isn't needed on this it should be no 
a mystery. It's not a disappearance. Although, as you said, Chase, he has already called it a disappearance. And we'll come to that uh, a bit later. But people rarely, rarely, rarely just disappear, just thin air. We have had one case where there was, you know, thin air. Um, but it's 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 very, very rare. So, um, oh, and now, now he doesn't have the phone number. He said right at the start, He's got he's got phone numbers and now he doesn't have the phone numbers. And notice in that first video, he took the phone out and then took every opportunity to stick it back in again. So he didn't have to go through that representing that that phone number straight off. Now he's in that position and now he's got to go. Yeah, actually, I don't don't have that phone number. Well, you can't have both. You can't have you have it and then you don't have it. So what happened to it, or didn't you have it in the first place? But that's not a, a, a layering of, of questions that these police want to go down because because um, that might alert him too much to something of a of a of a soft interrogation or even a hard one at this point. And he's giving lots of information by just them being there, just doing a, a welfare call. Uh, so extraordinary extraordinary situation. Uh, just like you, Scott, it didn't look great in the first video. Second video is not making it look any better. Uh, Greg, what do you got on this one? Well, you know what I heard when I watched this video? He knew that I knew that he knew that I knew. This is Castellanos, exactly Castellanos. He's frying a circuit, but he's quietly frying a circuit. If you guys remember the guy who claimed he had these hard drives and Dr. Phil was like, okay, show me the hard drives. You don't have them, do you? You remember that? He was all calm up until that moment. And I think what we're seeing is a fracture point in this calmness, and we're going to see a change. His sentences seem coherent, but rushed. I mean, to your point again, Chase, exactly what he's doing is he's giving all that information you don't need. Mark, you're right. He's adding some complexity that really doesn't need to be here. And I think he's got a rescue plan. I don't think he has the plan. I think he's, he has a technique he uses all the time. We're going to see in coming up ones. I have the phone numbers. I don't have the phone, phone numbers. You see, the reason I think he's just like Castellanos is although he has got the greatest comfort in the world, that baby, and I agree with you guys, I mean, having family, having a baby, having people who pet animals and all that kind of thing, you always see the supervillains you know, holding the cat and that kind of thing because it's calming for them. The same thing, you're holding a baby. A baby is probably one of the more calming things. Unless they're screaming in your ear, then it might be a different story. But we see, even in that, he slightly freezes when he realizes, oh, I don't have phone numbers. I've got this. Then he tries to give that. This head movement may be, may be cultural, but I don't think so. And the only time he's doing it is when he's talking about her. In this entire video to now, we talk about what happened to her. His head does some weird stuff. I don't think it's cultural. I think it's a combination of yes and no, and it's just weird movement. I, we'll keep a watch and see if we see it all along. Let's make a note right here. His sentence structure comes back to normal, and there's contempt in his face, and he, he winks and makes eye contact with that one police officer like, you get me, don't you? She's run off a bunch of times in the past. This guy's been in the military, U.S. military, where there is or now or not. I don't know. But, you know, if he's been in the military, guys know guys. And, you know, if you doesn't matter what culture you come from, you learn a lot more about American culture in the military than you probably would just about anywhere else. So this is going to be an interesting twist. But I think his circuitry is getting really hot right here. And we're starting to see him make real stupid mistakes. Although at the same time, not a lot of body language. Agree with you guys. It's mostly in word and maybe that freeze. Okay, so uh, if you could uh, give us the phone numbers, please. We want to see if we can make contact with her. Upward one. This is not the first time. Multiple times she go and then come back in a few days. Okay. I I knew it. The fat grip. I don't have the phone number for her sister. You know, usually I have a like. Uh, Facebook, but like I don't have her phone number. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So, you know, like that's what you know. I replied like two for twenty three. Usually she works Thursday to Saturday. She works there, and then you know, like it's not like first time she disappear and then come back. I live with my parents over there. She say like, okay, I'm not gonna live with your parents. My parents left back home, and then you know, still a lot of she going. She got the green card already, and then she was about to you know like. Okay. New York, and then she is not at the work. Uh, so yeah, uh, her employer, her employer called and uh, asking just just called us to check if she was okay. So that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. We don't mean to bother you. 
No, that's fine. She's supposed to be there. You know, usually, like, I don't know. I, I cannot check, you know, like, where she goes. Okay. I tried to paint you. It's all right. Military? Yeah. Work ranks? Army? Army? Okay. Navy? Did it keep her general? No, my, my wife's military. Oh, wow. So, uh, can I have your card or something? Yes, so I'll give you my yeah, card. Yeah, so that I can call back. Hopefully she either takes us because uh, one of our very closest five seven nine. I don't know, like maybe like she worked in that. But you're going to me The, uh, at this time, I know like the home inspection, they come over here, they are leave the home and then painting. Mm -hmm. So because, you know, I say like, I want to sell this home, you know, because, you know, a lot of stuff going on. So I just bought a year ago, it's less than a year. So I say like, I'm done. So people come over here and then, you know, see, you know, ask a little bit, but like, you know, I already told them like, you have to don't talk to anybody else, just, you know, make inspection and then make a value. The recommended for cat none of this. Even like she was five months, she left for like a week. We never know. And then one of friend tell me like somewhere in culture. And then after that, at that time, she had a laptop over here. In my laptop, her email was on. And then I see Uber was there. She did the Uber. And then I went to the nearby the building. And then I saw her, you know, like at the building. Because, you know, I worked, I worked for her like, you know, work time mm -hmm. i see her there and then same thing happens again another time right here in the bright street right she said like uh at that time we had a conversation she said like i'm in a fairfax but like you know i just guess maybe like see there and then i just wait for a few hours over there at that time my parents was here so you know i can go there and then i see she's just stepping out from her one of my friend both like you know both of us friends and then mm -hmm. she just step out and then i went inside you know why are you lying you know if you want to go just go if you don't want to go you know like but i, I don't want to stay with you that's what i think right. okay all right greg what do you got mark i think we're going to see him responding to the realizing he's created some kind of complexity in this video and what i see is social discomfort and probing for the perception of other people you see it all the time in people that you get pulled over by a cop you start trying to make small talk to try to perceive how that guy feels about you and there's no value in it. You're just doing it because it makes you feel safer and people do it all the time. It, if you pay, pay really close attention to what he starts, he's like in the military and then he, you see him change. You see everything about him change and you see his blink rate and respiration were up when the guy's processing his ID. But when he turns back to those people, he starts small talking, starting to make some kind of commentary so he can probe. You see it a lot in, in everyday people, but you also see it if you're in if you're in the medical field, you know that med seekers do this. They try to probe and feel how you feel about them. So they're trying to figure out whether they're going to get what they want or not. You see it in all kinds of people. Some people it becomes a lifestyle. And what they're doing is small talking, small talking, small talking. If they're talented, they bring it around through elicitation to get the information they want. If they don't, they're just looking and fishing for body language and behavior to figure out what you know or what you've caught on to. When those people get to where it's a lifestyle, we call those people needy. And if they're good enough at it, they get what they need. They get that way of being, uh, of being reinforced so they feel safe. I think we're seeing a lot of that here. And I think that's a really interesting thing that we know he's pride to circuit. He's not sure what they're doing. And so he, although he appears to be calm, there's something else going on in his head. Watch him too. This is the first time we see him do a single arm T-Rex. His elbow is against his torso and his arms moving to illustrate. The reason you're doing that most of the time is because it's much more comfortable when you're feeling stressed for your elbows to go to the sides because all the soft white underbelly is exposed and you're creating an exoskeleton of sorts. Imagine if somebody were taking a stick and swinging it from your side and your arms between all this soft stuff and the stick is human nature for your body to try to protect yourself. I think we're seeing a high level of stress here and the beginnings, Mark, of unoiling what he realizes is happening with that complexity he added, not because he intended to, but because he just doesn't know where to go next and he sees his little 
processors heated up. What do you got, Mark? Yeah, I think he leaves a little avenue open here that the police could go down. I, I understand why they they don't. There's no reason for them. They're they're being great at the job they do, which is to to you know ask after the wife, see what he reveals, check everything's okay. There's a kid there. They're going to be paying a lot of attention to to that as well. But he leaves this avenue of hopefully she's in Texas. Well, the question would be, would, what are you worried? Oh, you know, what else may have happened to her? What are the other possibilities? What do you worry might have happened to her? Hopefully she's in Texas rather than, well, hopefully she's round the corner or I know where she'll be. She'll be round down the corner. That's where she was last time. She'll show up. You know, that would be way simpler, you know, way more based on patterns. Whereas he's gone for a pattern which hasn't occurred before. Hopefully she's in Texas too many avenues there that you know if it wasn't a police call on welfare my guess is is you could go down that route and go what are you worried may have gone on here tell me that uh chase what do you got on this one totally agree and the first time greg and i ever met uh he knew i was military i knew he was military so it was like instantly we didn't have to feel each other out it was just like dude where were, where were you working at even though we're almost a generation apart. And Greg's like, oh, I was in Kuwait. I was like, oh, Kuwait City? Kuwait City? Because I know what went down there when you were serving. It was like an instant thing where we could go back and forth. And I think right. that was him kind of just throwing a, a line out to see if there was some kind of connection or anything like that. The over-explaining here is on fire. It's just a, it's a fire. But he goes to great lengths here to discredit the missing person. Lying. She lies. She's deceptive. She's unpredictable. She's irresponsible. Uh, subtext, bad mom. Uh, and here's why all of this happens like it is here. So if your brain is watching this video and you're like, this is not right. Like something's not right. The one thing I say all the time is, we're, I mean, we can do a lot of stuff with behavior, but all we're really doing is translating what your lower part of your brain is really seeing. We're just translators. So number one, there's this nervous over-explaining going on. He's feeling guilty and scared of getting caught. And people like this, they tend to overshare details. They're, they think that it's going to make them look helpful and innocent. So instead, it usually makes them feel rehearse it makes them look rehearsed and overly defensive next they want to control how the cops are seeing things so they start creating a story that sounds just right to them and this usually leads to extra details that come off as unnecessary or just too much and i think that's a another red flag and then there's these character attacks so just just hinting that their spouse was difficult or unreliable or had problems they're trying to explain away the disappearance because now the disappearance might make sense. Or if something happened to them, they might have deserved it. And that's kind of what's going on very subconsciously. And this blame shifting serves two purposes. In my mind, it, it distracts from their own actions and it helps them justify what they did in their own brain. And I think finally here, the, the stress of keeping up a lie can cause them to slip. And it usually makes people reveal grievances about the missing spouse. So the stress of lying makes the grievances start coming out. And these little jabs or complaints don't really fit the welfare check. And they can make them look a lot more suspicious, which I think it did here. Scott, what do you got? All right. About halfway through, what I'm going to start calling CTV because I talk about it all the time, cadence, tone, and volume, voice volume. That thing speeds up, it slows down, it speeds up, and it speeds up in fashion so that there's no pattern to it, but it keeps speeding up and slowing down. I think that's one uh, cue that lets us know we can see his stress level rising and falling and rising and falling. As they get comfortable, of course, the thing slows down, his voice will get lower, and his volume will get uh, lower as well. But the more we get stressed, the higher all those things go. So that's what's happened, I think, with him. And, and I think the officers are doing a great job of making their questions and their answers really small and tiny because I think it's hit them. Something's up here. Sort of things, uh-huh, yeah. Mm. 
stuff like that. So listen to that when you when this plays back through, because that's hard to do. That's hard to do to not stop and start asking a bunch of questions because at this point you're just collecting information, which is what these guys are doing. So again, then for the second half we hear that speeding up and slowing down of, of his cadence tone and volume and CTB as well. So there's no there's no what I call loping in here where you're you're giving the information and it's just kind of coming out and you're talking and your voice will go up a little bit and down a little bit and you're just sort of like. It's like being on a horse as you see him he's lope through this field. He's either speeding really fast, run, you know, he's running to win, a racing, or he's like walking through the mud. So everything is it's just too jerky in there. And I think they see this and it's hitting them. They may not know exactly what it is yet, but they know something's up because they see all these little red flags popping up everywhere. So without going into further detail, cover what you guys have covered, I'll end it there. New York and then see you look at the work. Uh, so yeah, uh, her employer, her employer called and uh, asking just just called us to check if she was okay. So that's why we're here. Mm. We don't mean to bother you. That's fine. She's supposed to be there. You know, usually like I don't know, I, I cannot check. You know, like where she goes. Okay. Yeah. I tried to thank you. It's all right. Military. Yeah. Work ranks. Army. Army. Cool. Navy. I'm today. Navy <clears throat> Virginia. No, my, my wife's military. Oh, wow. So, uh, can I have your card or something? Yes, so I'll give you my yeah, card. Yeah, so that I can call back. Hopefully, she is either Texas Bravo because six, uh, one of one our very closest five, seven, nine. Nine. I don't know, like, maybe like she worked a lot. The, uh, at this time, I know like the home inspection, they come over here, they are at the home and then painting. So because, you know, I say like, I want to sell this home, you know, because, you know, a lot of stuff going on, so I just bought a year ago. It's less than a year, so I say like I'm done. So people come over here and then you know see you know ask a little bit, but like you know I already told them like director don't talk to anybody else, just you know make inspection and then make a balloon. The right minute, but can none of this. Even like she was five months, she the left for like a week. We never know. And then one of friend tell me like somewhere in culture. And then after that, at that time, she had a laptop over here. In my laptop, her email was on. And then I see Uber was there. She did the Uber. And then I went to the nearby the building. And then I saw her, you know, like at the building. Because, you know, I worked, I worked for her like, you know, work time. Mm -hmm. I see her there. And then same thing happens again another time. Right here in the Bright Street, right? She see like, uh, at that time, we had a conversation. She said, like, I'm in a Fairfax. But, like, you know, I just guessed maybe, like, she is there. And then I just wait for a few hours over there. At that time, my parents was here. So, you know, I can go there. And then I see she's just stepping out from her. One of my friends, both, like, you know, both of us friends. And then mm -hmm. she just stepped out. And then I went inside. You know, why are you lying? You know, if you want to go, just go. If you don't want to go, you know, like, but I, I don't want to stay with you. That's what I said. Right. Okay. Tell me about your wife. What has been going on the last couple of days, weeks? Yeah, it's been very terrible time, you know, like we are just, you know, like my baby and then myself, we are just waiting minute and second, every minute and second, just waiting like to get the, you know, I, I don't know how to explain. How are you doing? I don't know. It, I'm, I'm like frustrating, yeah. How long have you guys been married? Three years, you said? Plus. Talk to me about your relationship, what, you know, the last couple of months, how have you guys been? Yeah, it's been like, you know, very good, like, you know, since like two months, you know, like before that, you know, one time we have like some arguments because, you know, yeah. You want to grab her? Yeah, can you hold? Yeah, yeah of course. Hurry. Well, I don't know that's what caught on the camera. In line of events, obviously there's been some, a little bit of discrepancy in the day you last saw her. Talk to me about the last time you saw her. Oh, uh, in the evening of the Wednesday, we were here and then we ate together. Yes. 
What did she say? What was she like? Did she... Uh, we don't have like any type of that, you know, it was like normal day, like other regular days, just, you know, like, uh, you know, we were taking care of our babies. It was like very normal. Did you, did she say anything about leaving? No. So how did you realize that she was missing? Oh, uh, you know, like uh, she wasn't uh, up here at her work and then she is very like, you know, focused on her work. And then once we know, like, you no, know, she is not at work, then, you know, like that makes very serious to me. And, uh, you know, that's how, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like what I supposed to say. When was the last time you saw her? Uh, a Wednesday in the evening. Okay, and then what happened after that? Did she leave? Did you leave? No, just like, you know, she was like, you know, working in the kitchen, you know, like after like, you know, eating dishes and then stuff like that. I just went upstairs with my baby. Okay, and you... All right, Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, so he's, he's asked after his uh, feelings around this. I don't know how to explain, he says. I don't know how to explain. And we see some contempt or disdain. Side of the mouth moves up. Uh, that's interesting because I would, it would be nice to see, I mean, obviously there's some argument with the wife, I guess, um, you know, to your point, uh, Chase, um, he does later in the, in the last set of videos that we talk say, um, you know, if she doesn't show up, should he file a complaint? Should he file a complaint? If she doesn't, my wife hasn't shown up. I'd like to complain to the authorities that she isn't doing what she's told. You know, so to your point, Chase, there is obviously some complaint that he has uh, around his his wife. Um, I don't know how to explain. There's contempt, disdain. Is it for her? Is it for the situation? I don't know. I'm not a mind reader. But certainly what we'd want to see uh, if there was some attachment to her in, 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 in more of a, uh, a loving way would be some sense of loss or sadness around that. Um when was the last time you saw her? Great question. Great question. When was the last time you saw her? Uh, Wednesday in the evening. Wednesday in the evening, he says. His eyes go to the left. Um, no, I'm, I, Greg, I'll pass to you next, and you can maybe give us some kind of read on that. But I'm, I'm not worried about where exactly his eyes go. It's just it's out of his baseline on that. They haven't really gone in this very quick directional way just to the side there um eyes go to the left blink rate increases on that he does two very shut eyes on that almost eye blocking with that uh his head uh goes goes down and at that point the camera pulls in at the same time so what's lovely about this is the cameraman knows that this is a key question and he's and he's pulled focus in so we as the audience uh, on the news will be able to see his reaction. Of course, we'd love to see sadness, but we don't see any of that. Oh, and uh, Wednesday in the evening, he must have, I mean, he must have gone over time and time again in his mind when he last saw her. You would. When I, I last saw her, I saw her and she said this and we were doing this. And, and then what happened? Because... There's a disappearance. You're going, what happened after that? So to have to think at all about when you last saw somebody, you shouldn't have to think unless you're having to make stuff up. I would suggest something something is being made up here around uh, Wednesday in the evening. Uh, but Greg, what do you got on this one? Yeah, Mark, I think that's more of the prepared stuff he's already done. And he needs to control release, but he's not control release. And we're really seeing him show a whole lot here. Remember I talked about social discomfort with the police and how people will, if they're med seeking, if a cop pulls you over, Chase, you and I have both been in situations where we have power over people and they start trying to, you know, make some kind of rapport with you and try to tie up like a chase. <laughs> hey, chase, you're frozen. Just relax, let it all go. He's just bought some of Yes. Your hat. Good to the yeah. environment. <laughs> <laughs> That's too tight now. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we know it is, Chase. We know it's good for the environment. Well done. Yeah, well done. That's funny. Whatever. That's funny. But uh, did I at least look cool? You, you had your eyes closed. Uh, like your eyes closed. Oh, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. It's funny. One sec. I'm going to switch my Wi Fi. Right, okay. I'll just start it up a little bit. Yeah. Over to Starlink 1. 
I'm not editing any of this out. I'm going to leave it in. We'll just go back. What I wish would have, he would have frozen when he's laid back in that chair like that. Because he had that look on his face where he was going to, or it looked like when you see this, I think you boys need to get your shit and get out of here is what I think. <laughs> you know, that look. <laughs> yeah. He's frozen. Now look at him. Yeah, that yeah. was a better one. You were cool in that one. I think you were just in. Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, my whole thing is everything's <clears throat> changed. Where did all that social discomfort and that probing for perception go? He was doing it with the cops. He's not doing it with this person. And I, if you if you remember what we were talking about, I was saying med seekers do it. Chase, you and I have both been in situations where we're armed and we're going door to door and people need our approval. They do it all the time. They try to make small talk, whether it's through a terp or through an interpreter, or whether they can speak your language. They try to make small talk and they try to see how you're perceiving them because of the threat. He's not doing it with this reporter, which is probably not a good sign because a reporter is often more dangerous than first contact with police because reporters appear to be no threat. I always say, don't do something stupid. If you have done something criminal, don't get in front of a camera. But I've changed my mind. Please do, because we need <laughs> material. Need material. <laughs> and this guy, this guy is not paying attention. This, Believe it or not, one of the most powerful ways we get information from people is not by the interrogator. It's by the guard, who happens to be an interrogator posing as a guard. Because the guy who is actually threatening, people don't talk to. We put him back in the cage, drop in another prisoner, drop in somebody else, and they... Roll. I mean, they chat like crazy. So this is one of those dangerous times. If you're ever in trouble and you're talking to somebody who appears to not be a threat, they're the most threatening because your guard is down. He's not socially, pro- he's not socially probing to try to figure out their perception of him. His blink rate is off the chart. Mark that disgust or that contempt. I'm not sure is not for the reporter. Mm. Don't know. It could be because she's probing and he's like, you know, leave me alone. He doesn't need her. You know, sometimes when people don't need people. Some people treat re- like waiters and, and servers like garbage because they don't have to treat them nice. There's distaste when he says, we are frustrated. That You always talk about, Martin. Mm. Now, it could be a language slip, but I would ask. I would say, what do you mean by frustrated? And that's the last thing I would feel. What do you mean? I'd just ask him just to figure out. He's bracing in that door frame to relieve stress. The head movement isn't the same as the last one. This looks like uncertainty when he bobbles that head again, talking about her. Now, it could be cultural. If you know something about Nepal culture that I don't, please put it in the notes. That's a fairly narrow band. Uh, But it looks like he's doing mostly American-style head movement until he gets to talking about her. Now she isn't running off and leaving and having mental issues that we heard about earlier. Why? Why did he tell the police? She's got mental issues. She's running off and leaving. Everything's been good for the last two months. Once he gets through that, that prepared statement, he's nodding. And his respiration starts to go up when he's talking about the last time he saw her. And he says yes at the end of one of these things. She did this. Yes, that's it. That's awkward. Out of speech pattern for everything else we've seen. This is just weird. And then he has, what am I supposed to say? You know, I, I thought of one line. Well, you do have the right to remain silent. <laughs> and there's a Ron White. I'm going to paraphrase Ron White, but not apparently not the ability. So he just keeps saying stuff. And that when she asks about the last time you saw her, There's a massive cluster. There's a tongue jut. We say there's no such thing as deception cues, one individual cue, but there are discomfort cues and piling them up is a good indicator. You probably need to dig in. There's a tongue jut and Desmond Morris is the guy who originally said that's baby's first no, pushing something out of their mouth. Distasteful. His blink rate goes through the roof. His respiration goes through the roof. His cadence of speech changes. His coherency changes. He starts to kind of string words together that don't make any sense and then his lips purse and he shows some disapproval in there that's a whole lot a whole lot coming out of one question scott what do you got all right he starts the whole thing starts coming toward him at this point because he starts talking about my baby not our daughter so i think that's important because we're starting to see where he's coming from on this because he's starting to get worried about himself so it's becoming about himself in there now the head shakes uh, where he's where it's going back and forth and up and down. When you the first time you look at body language, you start studying body language. The, the very first thing you want to take into consideration is is what you're seeing. Is this something that's cultural or is it something that's limbic? This is something you're seeing that they do all the time because that's the way they do it in their country. They stand this close to you, like they do in the Middle East, or they stand at a distance, like we do in America and Canada and other places. Some places are closer than others, so you have to 
make a decision about what you're seeing. Is it something that's cultural or limbic, something that's happening in the brain? Is it dealing with something that, that scares them, something that makes their stress level go up, something that kicks them to fight or flight or a hint of that, uh, a fight or flight, just a touch of it? So that's the first question you've got to start asking yourself or, or start making decisions about. So that that's really important. So for me in this, like you're saying, Greg, it's it's tough to tell what's going on with, with the head shake, with that bobbing going on. I, I, I can't tell at all. So um, I think as she's talking to him, as she asks him questions, this guy freezes like a statue, doesn't move anything, nothing moves, doesn't blink, doesn't breathe, doesn't do it, he just sits there looking at her. And the reason being is because when he's thinking up what he's got to say about that, he's got to create a lie for that. And when you tell a lie, what happens is this. Your brain has to go through a process of three things. The first thing it's got to do is says, it says, hey, wait, hang on a minute, man, stop. We can't say that. So your brain stops or says stop. You can't let that go. This is we have to make up a lie. So it makes up the lie, and then it delivers the lie, a little story that you're telling. So I think that's what we're seeing here. That's why he's frozen. It's because he's locked right on here. Quite often you'll hear people say, when somebody lies to you, I know they're lying because they break eye contact. This is a perfect example of why that isn't true. And we know this from studies. It's been studied and shown time and time and time again. And what happens is this. Their brain wants to keep looking at you, and they do, to make sure you believe what they're saying. Because it's really important for her to believe him or him to know whether or not she's believing him. Because this is TV. Everybody's going to see this. And I think we find out in the next video, a bunch of people were mad at him. And they're already doing that thing where they start pointing you did it. You're the one that, that killed her. That's why she's missing. So he's he's on alert at this point. So that's why he doesn't want to take his eyes off her. And he's freezing and staring at her as she's asking questions. So he misses nothing, number one. And number two, he's got to make sure she believes him. So he doesn't have to add qualifiers to what's happening there. So there, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, did you go, Chase? Not yet. All right. What do you got? Greg, I missed two things when we were talking earlier. Number one, we're filming this on Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day, brother. Same, brother. And thanks for your service. So, Same to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, guys. My pleasure. For mine, anyway. Me too. It's the best part of my life. Uh, and second, I hold a 10-month-old baby all the time nowadays. And I'm in very good shape. But after like 15 minutes of holding her in my arm... It's like I've just lifted 9,000 pounds. Like like I have like muscle failure. So I think that might be contributing to the T-Rex thing because I think he had just shifted over because I feel like that. Uh, I don't know. I feel like a sissy saying that, but I feel like that. But this whole clip, it went from she's unpredictable and we're separating to I can't wait to get her home. So when the news anchor, here's what happened. Because I'm skipping over a lot of notes that y'all had. Uh, so when the news anchor came to his door, there was a shift in him. So when the police were there, they were interviewing a suspect in his mind. So he became a suspect defending himself, even though there was no accusation or interrogation. So who did news people interview? Grieving spouses. So he became a grieving spouse. So always be on the lookout for this. We call this script reactions in, in NCI or, or my training. We have scripts in our minds for how things are supposed to go and what happens in certain contexts. Police come to my door. This is a context and I have a bubble of what happens there. Maybe that bubble is filled with crap that I've seen on YouTube, but there's still a bubble there. And since it's all an act, his behavioral script defaulted to the behavior that he's witnessed on TV or YouTube. So you can spot narcissists really fast if you get good at seeing these behavioral shifts when context changes. If context sways someone's behavior, it's a very good sign that they are very familiar with wearing a mask socially. And the person that they are when nobody's looking is most likely very different from what you're seeing. But she says, how are you doing? And he says, I don't know. Then he tries to search for a better answer. She asks, what was she like this these final days or this last day? And what did he say? His response is all about whether or not there was an argument. 
However, he may be defending himself from some crap he's read online or something like that. Uh, so first she's gone all the time and now her being gone is a huge deal. And I wish we had better video to watch this guy. Something tells me that if we get the chance, uh, this is going to be a beautiful interrogation. And I think it's going to be a great interrogation video. I can already tell, but he referred to their baby three different ways. Now, uh, Scott, I thought you were going to fully smoke me on that, but I was only a little smoked. Uh, uh, when they're sharing custody, it's the baby. When they're together, it's our baby. When she's missing, it's my baby. So in this video, so it's changed. Very different use of pronouns there for the same article, which should be maybe one of the most important things in his life that might always share a very similar article. Uh, that's all I got. I saw this is my over. baby. <laughs> oh, look, super villain. Villain. super villain. About your wife, what has been going on the last couple of days, weeks? Yeah, it's been very terrible time. You know, like we are just, you know, like my baby and then myself. We are just waiting minute and second, every minute and second, just waiting, like to get the. You know, I, I don't know how to explain. How are you doing? I don't know. It, I'm, I'm like frustrating here. Yeah. How long have you guys been married? Three years, you said? Plus. Talk to me about your relationship. What, you know, the last couple of months, how have you guys been? Yeah, it's been like, you know, very good, like, you know, since like two months, you know, like before that, you know, one time we have like some arguments because, you know, yeah. Do you want to grab her? Yeah, can you hold? Yeah, yeah of course. Curry. Well, I love this with cut in line of events, obviously there's been some a little bit of discrepancy in the day you last saw her. Talk to me about the last time you saw her. Uh, uh, in the evening of the Wednesday, we were here and then we ate together. Yes. What did she say? What was she like? Did she... Uh, we don't have like any type of that. You know, it was like normal day, like other regular days. Just, you know, like, uh, you know, we were taking care of our babies. It was like very normal. Did you, did she say anything about leaving? No. So how did you realize that she was missing? Oh, uh, you know, like uh, she wasn't uh, up here at her work, and then she's very, like, you know, focused on her work, and then once we know, like, you know, she's not at work, then, you know, like, that makes very serious to me, and, uh, you know, that's how, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like, what I supposed to say. When was the last time you saw her? Uh, a Wednesday in the evening. Okay, and then what happened after that? Did she leave? Did you leave? No, just like, you know, she was like, you know, working in the kitchen, you know, like after like, you know, eating dishes and then stuff like that, I just went upstairs with my baby. Okay, and you... Then what happened next? When was she supposed to go to work that yes. night? Yeah, uh, we work early in the morning. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, like uh, about like, you know, 5.30, like around 6, we supposed to leave from the home. But she left the night before. No, like Thursday supposed to see at work. On on Thursday she's supposed to be at work. So Wednesday night though, yeah. what happened there? You went to sleep. Where was she? Oh, so she was like working in the kitchen, and then right there, you know, like uh, usually, like you know, if I have to work, you know, like I go there, and then sometimes, you know, in the morning we do not disturb because of the baby, you know, like who is not working, we do not disturb to you know another person. So, you know, keep taking care of the baby and then, you know, slightly left the home and then go for work. That's what the, the, that's what the regular schedule is. So she never came to sleep, though? Yes, he came. Like, I heard, like, you know, noise, something like that. You know, like, uh, she came, like, you know, she was here doing, like, dishes and then stuff like that. You know, I heard that, you know, like, some type of noise. But, like, you know, you don't, you know, like, uh, pay much attention uh, like that because that is the regular schedule. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't normally sleep together at night? Oh, you, we do sometimes, you know, like if we have work sometimes, you know, like okay. if we feel like, you know, more relaxed, like, you know, we go like there is like two separate areas gotcha. okay. and then sometimes, you know, like one sleep on the floor and then sometimes, you know, like uh, another person sleep on the bed. You know, we usually like, you know, we do not want to disturb our baby. That's why, you know, like we try to, you know, like 
minimize our noise, stuff like that. Gotcha. Okay. So police came to the home, and what did they say to you? Because you didn't initially report her missing. Why no, is that? Like on the next day, okay. when the you know like uh, on the first day when like she did not come at home in the evening, and then I check around, you know like uh, one, like usually where she go for hang around and then stay for with the friends. Just I check from the outside, and then you know I thought like you know she went like before you know something like that. So you know I just you know came back and then sleep with the baby and then next day once I wake up you know like a little bit later I was you know working in the kitchen with the babies and then you know police say like you know she's not at work she's at home then I realized very seriously then I you know talk to police and then I say like stay here just talk to police and then her, why she did not you know at work this and that and then then I really start and then I say like I'm gonna file it so police suggest me like it's just you know if, if, if it happens before search around and then if you are like tired of searching, you can file it and then very next day. And then I text to the police officer, hey, uh, you know, like, you know, like I already searched everywhere. And then he respond me, you know, in the text message. And then later on, like, you know, it's a long text message. He said like, okay, now you can, you know, officially file it, call 911. And then that's what I did after that. And then, yeah. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so look, uh, let's get into this cultural part of it because, of course, in uh, in let's say the Indian subcontinent, uh, there is the the head bobble, and do write down below about that because it is an extraordinary thing, and we do get this indecisive head from him now and again, but I think it is true indecision rather than a cultural element. The cultural part we don't get a lot. He's from Nepal, and again. Down below, if there's something very significant about uh, Nepal, of course, um, Veterans Day today for Commonwealth uh, members, it's uh, Remembrance Day. And of course, uh, great regiment, the regiment of the Gurkhas, uh, probably uh, no other regiment so um, so distinguished in the First World War for their bravery. So the, the Nepalese, incredible, incredible uh, fighters. So shout out to them. On, uh, on Remembrance Day. But here we have somebody who is full of mystery, full of mystery, no explanation for the, for the disappearance at all. It's just, just gone, disappeared. And, and that is very hard to happen. It's very hard for people to just disappear into thin air. We have had it once in, uh, I think it was Nicola bully i think it was the was was the case and and there in that specific case many many people and we can understand why when okay it has to be the husband it has to be the husband because that's the first place you are going to go when when these mysterious disappearances uh, of course at the time we said no i wouldn't look in that direction at all and and uh, not that we're trying to celebrate this but we were vindicated uh, in that in this case, I would be surprised if it went down that route uh, at all. Um, but here's what we'd expect, is that the husband here should be focused on the search, it should be hopeful of, of finding the wife, focused on the search, asking for help around that, and should have some theories as to what has happened, rather than no idea at all, and this disappearance into thin air this 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 mystery um and, and then there's there's lots of focus on reasons to make no noise a kind of let's go back to culture that there's there's this family culture of stealthiness this family culture of being able to wake nobody up sleep in separate rooms or the same room one on the bed one on the floor like we've got all kinds of ways to make sure nobody is heard and children sleep and therefore people could get up and leave and you just never know. So there's this explanation of somebody could just disappear because we have this kind of stealthy family culture that we've evolved. Doesn't It's not reasonable by, by any norm and it's not reasonable that people just disappear into thin air it doesn't really happen that often scott what have you got on this one i'm going to be short on this one 
Um, but I agree agree with you 100%. Um, his, again, his cadence, tone, and volume. This, this is one of those things that as the – and they change as he progresses toward the details again. He starts pulling out all these details that weren't asked for. So as that happens, we see him speed up and slow down and speed up. His voice goes higher. He gets a little bit lower. It's just pretty much the same thing. But compared to the interview before this one, he's starting to break down. I mean, compared to the, to the cops interview, he's starting to break down. He's starting to lose a little bit because I think he's so far up in here and working that story, trying to remember how he structured it. What went where? I can't mess this up. Here's what's happened. I've thought about this forever. It's showtime. Now I've got to be able to tell because I believe that some people did. I think we find out in the, in the, in the last video of this uh, interview that some people were, were getting after him and, and again, pointing fingers at him and doing all that. So I think that's getting up in his head too. So now that's why he's got to be on extra guard. He's got to be extra careful about what he says. That's what slows him down. And then when he gets excited, he starts speeding up, but he starts thinking about it. He has that inner dialogue going on of, of trying to structure everything. And I think that's where I, why this thing's starting to come apart on him and his stress level goes up so high. Chase, or who's it? Who hadn't been him? Am I the last one? Two of us. Oh, Chase. Do what? Chase. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, Greg, you go next. Chase, you'll get so, your turn. So what, what's what's interesting for me here is you both brought it up, but I, I've only had the chance to say this term one time ever before, and I don't remember which video it was in. I never thought it would happen twice. This is pig Latin chant by the time he's done, because you can't understand a damn thing he's saying. It's just strung together syllables that make no sense. I have no idea what he's talking about by the end of this. If you guys do, that you can help me, because they're just nonsense almost at, at the very end. His language starts to remind me of interrogating somebody in Arabic without an interpreter. When I was a decent linguist, it was hard as hell to interrogate somebody in Arabic for one reason, because your brain is trying to translate words while you're talking to this guy and trying to understand him, and you're trying to get out ahead of him, doing all the things an interrogator does. His brain's getting out of sync because of stress, and it starts to sound like that. You'll pick up key words and things will go in the right place. But often, neither of you is really getting the full message. That's the reason we use interpreters, even if you speak the language a lot of times. Chase, I'm sure you got some time with Terps. And when you're talking through them, it gives you time to think and gives you time to make the next question. This guy's in a bind. He's got no time to think. And he's just stringing together nonsense. I, one of my other thing is, if you went and asked chat GPT, what does stupid sound like? This probably would be the end of the comment. It's just crazy. His brain's marked, like you said earlier, he's like a squirrel in the road. He's running around. There's no... We saw his baseline with the cops, and he had coherent sentence structure. He's lost coherence here. Cadence and coherence have failed. Again, we expect that if he thought these, this person had any value that he needed to get some information out of her, he would be doing that, asking for approval and poking and prodding and trying to get information out of her, like we saw earlier, making small talk. It's not there. Like I said, med seekers would do that. You don't see that here. As he talks about the noise, his neck is the definition of turtling. We talk about people going smaller in their body. Look at him. His picture would be in one of our books to say, this is turtling. You can all recognize it. You can all see it. This is just horrible. This is one of the worst I've ever seen. And I don't know much of a way to redeem him at this point. Let's see what he does in the next one. Chase, what do you got? You look like Nosferatu when you did that. That's why I'm laughing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I kind of got the haircut and the look. (laughs) Greg, you... One time in a video, you used the name frog sack to talk about somebody's neck, and that just brought all of that back. Uh, I think it was George Santos. I think. Uh, maybe. So he uses like he, he knew she was home because of stuff like that, you know, dishes, some type of noise. I just think that is the, like if you were going to teach a course on body language and ambiguity, that little clip right there is so perfect for that. Uh, and Greg's always talking about eye movements, and I think I'm on the same train. And patterns in eye movements are more important than memorizing location. Understanding how that person works individually is more important than location. So in this guy, if, I, if I'm talking to somebody and they're looking over here all the time for every piece of data, every piece of data, every memory, everything's over here the whole time, and all of a sudden, they talk about a missing person, and they gesture with a hand they've never gestured with before, and they look over this way. Something's off. I'm not saying there's a lie. Something's different. 
And the first thing that all of us look for is change. What's changing from how this person normally behaves? And we're seeing change there. So he only uses his left hand once in the whole clip, only looks to his left once in the whole clip. And this is the, him talking about the police interaction. When he's talking about the police interaction, that was the truthful piece. Everything else was kind of a made-up story. So lacking emotion, lacking detail, and their spikes of information are everywhere there's something irrelevant, there's lots of data. Everywhere there's something relevant, there's minimal data. Where does she go? Where is she? Where is she likely? All that stuff. So you have peaks and valleys of data. Then what happened next? When was she supposed to go to work that yes. night? Yeah, uh, we work early in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like uh, about like, you know, 5, 30, like around 6, we supposed to leave from the home. But she left the night before? No, like Thursday supposed to see at work. On, on Thursday, she's supposed to be at work. So Wednesday night, though, yeah. what happened there? You went to sleep. Where was she? Oh, so she was like working in the kitchen and then right there, you know, like uh, usually like, you know, if I have to work, you know, like I go there and then sometimes, you know, in the morning we do not disturb because of the baby, you know, like who is not working, we do not disturb to, you know, another person. So, you know, keep taking care of the baby and then, you know, slightly left the home and then go for work. That's what the, the, that's what the regular schedule is. So she never came to sleep, though? Yes, he came. Like, I heard, like, you know, noise, something like that. You know, like, uh, she came, like, you know, she was here doing, like, DCS and then stuff like that. You know, I heard that, you know, like, some type of noise. But, like, you know, you don't, you know, like, uh, pay much attention uh, like that because that is the regular schedule. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't normally sleep together at night? Oh, you, we do sometimes, you know, like if we have work, sometimes, you know, like okay. if we feel like, you know, more relaxed, like, you know, we go like there is like two separate areas okay. and then sometimes, you know, like one sleep on the floor and then sometimes, you know, like uh, another person sleep on the bed. You know, we usually like, you know, we do not want to disturb our baby. That's why, you know, like we try to, you know, like minimize our noise, stuff like that. Gotcha. Okay. So police came to the home and what did they say to you? Because you didn't initially report her missing. Why no, is that? Like on the next day, okay. when the, you know, like uh, on the first day when like she did not come at home in the evening and then I check around, you know, like uh, like usually where she go for hang around and then stay for with the friends, just I check from the outside and then, you know, I thought like, you know, she went like before, you know, something like that. So, you know, I just, you know, came back and then sleep with the baby and then next day once I wake up, you know, like a little bit later I was, you know, working in the kitchen with the babies and then, you know, police say like, you know, she's not at work, she's at home. Then I realized very seriously, then I, you know, talk to police and then I say like, stay here, just talk to police and then her, why she did not, you know, at work, this and that. And then, then I really start and then I say like, I'm going to file it. So if police suggest me like, it's just, you know, if, if, if it happens before, search around. And then if you are like tired of searching, you can file it and then very next day. And then I text to the police officer, hey, uh, you know, like, you know, like I already searched everywhere. And then he respond me, you know, in the text message. And then later on, like, you know, it's a long text message. He said like, okay, now you can, you know, officially file it, call 911. And then that's what I did after that. And then, yeah. Has she ever gone missing before? What do you mean? You said to me on the phone that she's left before. Yes. Talk to me about that. How many times? What were the circumstances? Did you call police? No, at that time we never called police. You know, like at that time, altogether three times, you know, she went out. At that time she has a demand because our parents were here and then she said like, you know, she want to send parents back and then she want to stay only with three, our baby and then ourselves. Okay. But this time she didn't leave with the baby? No. Uh, no, before as well, like, you know, baby, you know, she always leave baby here. She didn't, uh, do not take the baby. She never took the baby? Yeah, no. Okay. Did she leave with any belongings? Did she leave with a car? Mm, no, most of the belongings are here, but like, you know, you know, her regular stuff, paperwork or stuff like that, you know, like, she usually put her on a bag, you know, stuff like that. Other than that, you know, most of the stuff are here. So somebody at the press conference today said that her passport and was yeah, missing. Because, you know, like a passport and then stuff like that because she started new job here and then usually she put on the bag and then passport is not here because passport on the passport there is a stamp yeah. uh, which work as a work permit. That's why maybe like, you know, she took with her. Gotcha. 
I know some people got pretty upset with you today. What is your yeah. message to them? Just like, you know, be calm, you know, like help. I mean, you know, our main focus is help finding my wife and my baby's mom and then cooperate with the police and then, you know, like uh, just go in a positive way. Do you have any idea where she could be at this point? Yeah, wherever, like, you know, I have doubted. I already, you know, personally, um, you know, I carry my baby and then personally I went there and then I already take a look. Where would that be? Um, Falls Church and then other places, yeah. You mentioned to me on the phone that you're the one suffering tonight. You mentioned... Yeah, tonight, yeah I'm, the su I'm the sufferer one. I'm the sufferer. My baby and then myself, you know, like, we are suffering the most. What do you say to her if she's watching this right now? If she's watching, come back, whatever is the issue, you know, like, we can fix it. Please. Did you guys have any sort of fight before? No. Nothing. No. Did you hear the people at the press conference today talking about yeah, how... I was there with the baby, but, like, I stay for, like, you know, uh, hour or something like that. After that, baby is keep crying, so somebody dropped me off here. You don't know where she is at all? No idea? No idea. Thank you for speaking with me. I appreciate it. Uh, Chase, what do you got? The best question here is, was anything missing? And he gives the best answer that's straight out of an interrogation training, a, a lie detection training or any of that. Uh, and in, in training, here's what you're going to hear. Here's the sample question that you'll hear. You're going to hear, what did you do when you left the office on Wednesday night? And somebody says, well, I usually go straight home. Usually go straight home is not an answer. And he says, here's what she usually takes, not what was taken from the house. This is like textbook reaction. But his lip looking here is getting to be one of the most powerful predictors of information accuracy, I think, especially when it's followed by this lip compression, which I have no doubt that Mark's going to get close to the camera and demonstrate here in just a second. Uh, but his message to the people who are angry, be calm. Our main focus is help finding my wife and my baby's mom, cooperate with the police, just go in a positive way. But I think he's making one big mistake here, and it's ruining his entire chances at believability. One gigantic mistake. There are two ways that a real person with a real missing spouse can choose to act. If it's real. A, I don't know where they are, and I need everybody's help to find them immediately. She's missing unwillingly. B is, I'm pissed off that she's gone. I'm the one suffering. She willingly left me. I don't know where she is. She abandoned me and the, and the baby. Just those two. So if you remember how we talked about these behavioral scripts that we have, he's a script guy. So he knows from his experience watching TV and uh, that all of these people act in this way his brain did not make the distinction between these two reactions. So it's performing both of them at the same time. That's all I got. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, nice. Um, here's the bit I love about this. Uh, has she ever gone missing before is the question. Has she ever gone missing before? He replies, what do you mean? Now, that begs belief because he'd set up the narrative that she's gone missing before. Like, that's his narrative. Is like, well, she's done this. She's done this before. He's told the police that's the case. He's got some locations, possibly Texas or New York. Like, he's laid down. And this, this uh, journalist has literally laid his own narrative in front of him and gone, hey, here's your opportunity to go, yes, she has. Yes, she has done this before. And I told the police. I said. You know, there was this time when she, when she did this and then she ended up, I had to go searching for her and I was outside her house and I found out where she was. And But he goes, what do you mean? I'd be like, what do you mean, what do I mean? It's your story, mate. It's your story. I just laid it out for you. Like, take it and run because the next few questions, I'm going to destroy you. So, so have this at least. At least I gave you this to get you comfortable. I... I, the only reason I can think he says, what do you mean, is he can't, he's in such stress now, he can't even remember his own, his own narratives that he's laid down. He's making this up now on the, on the spot and has forgotten everything 
that he's laid down. Um, yeah, to your point, Chase, this, um, you know, well, usually, usually she does, she does this. He says, most of her stuff is here. Most of her stuff is here. Well, that begs the question, okay, well, what is missing? And he does get there because he's laying down this idea that the passport is missing. The passport is missing. But I mean, he could have said that, you know, did she take anything with her? Yeah, she took her passport. It's gone. It's gone, which makes me think she's going abroad and she's abandoning us. I mean, what a great, you know, it's, it's all there if you just laid it down from moment one. But he, he has to kind of get there. I mean, if the passport was missing, it'd be the first thing. The passport is missing. Like, can we get, here's the passport number. We have it written down. I've got a photograph of it. Like, let's get that out to the airport. So let's find out what port she has been leaving from. You know, and and then and then we'll know. But I mean, it's a complete it's a complete mess at this point. Uh, Scott, where you got on this one? Um, yeah, I'm trying to decide the things you didn't cover that, that I've got that I've got all my stuff. The part about she's uh, has she ever gone missing before? Okay, says what do you mean? Um, while he's answering, he says at that time three times, and he has another phrase in there with the word that or with the word time another time so within four seconds he says the word time four four times in four seconds that's a whole lot because i think if things been is sorry everything is askew now that she's messed him up like you said mark coming out of the gate she's like uh has she ever gone missing before he's like what do you mean so i think everything's sort of been uh knocked out of place for him and he knows that this isn't good for his story this is this is not good for him so then she says did you leave uh did she leave with any of your belongings that's when it, again his cadence tone and volume skyrocket man they go through the roof at that point so he's using more filler words more uh, qualifiers all these things are happening and it's starting to dawn on him that he didn't think this through thoroughly enough i think and that's where he starts to panic because keep in mind people have got i think she's gonna bring it up in a minute how people got after him and so this this whole thing started to unravel right before our eyes because he can't get a handle on it at this point. So then when she asks about the people who got upset with him, here it is, then he, that's when he actually starts to unravel ravel because he can't even say my wife at this point. He stutters through trying to say his wife. That's a big deal if your wife is missing and you can't even say my wife. So right there, fly, I mean, there's flags all over this thing. Oh, and then... Do what? Oh, Suzanne. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> watch it. Watch it. <laughs> yeah, easy. Remember, he, but, he got released. He got released. Yeah. Well, anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, I know. Uh, he says, do you, she says, do you have any idea where she could be? Um, and this is fun. It's not funny, but it's hilarious what starts happening here because he just starts talking. I don't know what he's saying. I cannot figure out what this cat is talking about. It's just like... He's he's gone so far away from his his frontal lobe controlling anything or thinking about being being logical because he's in a, a shit panic at this point. So his brain's on fire and he's freaking out, but he's but he's trying to keep it under control. And I think he does a pretty good job for actually what's happening here. So he, but we can hear it at this point. So I think it's really interesting. We usually you know we all the time look at body language and behavior and what they're saying, everything in there. But this time it's focused on more what how he's saying what he's saying so th- this for me i mean that woman should have stopped and said dude what are you talking about you know and with the understanding that he'd been busted if she'd come on like that with him i think at that point he would just start crying and said yeah i did it but i, th- I think he's in, in in a panic here and then he turns himself into the victim he turns everything around and he's the victim so and then she says did you guys have any uh, sort of fight he says no but he says no a little higher like when when Can- on Candace Wells when uh, Greg and I were talking to her on Doctor Phil, you know, on his show, and well, I can't remember what the question was, and she goes, "No, really high." When she'd been talking right in here, and all of a sudden the no was really high, and that happens when stress hits you really quickly, and your larynx gets a little bit tighter because your throat tightens up, and your your chest tightens up a little bit, and the air comes out faster, and it sends that tone of your voice higher. That was that one word. It's always no. So it's really compared to how he's been talking, it's really high in there. So I I, th- I think uh, 
I think this doesn't look good. Oh, and he took the baby. He was talking about being at the press conference. He took the baby to the press conference as well. So that goes back to my theory. He's taking the baby so he looks like, oh, he's, he's okay. He's a nice guy. He's got a little baby with him. Trying to hope, hope that sweetness of the baby transfers to him because he's got little babies holding it. He's the dad. He's all these things. But in actuality, I think we know what. We never did say what, hat, what he had done on here. I don't think we should because it's too graphic. But he did some horrible stuff. Yeah, he did some horrible stuff. Horrible stuff in here. So, all right, we good? Allegedly. No, allegedly. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, alle allegedly. Sorry, <laughs> let me say he allegedly did some horrible stuff. Yeah, no, it, and it's all I circumstantial don't... evidence. Nobody knows. No, I haven't gone yet, Scott. I'll go. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Let me reiterate yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know for sure. That's the way it looks to me. So, yeah. okay, so, go ahead, Greg. Here's what we do know. What we do know is, and, and I'm going to hit some of the same things you guys hit, but add a little bit of nuance. Mark, to your point. What do I think is happening when he can't, when he's like, what are you talking about, basically? I think he's tied up. His head is tied up with that little incantation. He just did that pig Latin chant he did last time because his brain is already scrambling. And he's probably in his head going, okay, where did I just say? And how is she perceiving that? And how's this going to be perceived? And once you get your brain, your processor tied up in that complex thought, it's tough to come back. I can't tell you how many times I've interrogated people and you get into a really tough situation and they don't even hear the second question. Because your brain is so wrapped on that first question, you have to repeat, go back and retrack if you really want good, accurate information. So that's what I think we're seeing. And if you don't believe that, watch his eyes kind of bulge when he says, what do you mean? I think he's not certain where she's headed, what she's asking with a question or something else. There could be some legitimate misunderstanding, but also fear of what she's asking. And the reason I say that is because he goes, oh, yeah, you know, you've ranted for an hour with a, minutes with the police about her running off. To your guys' point, I don't know why you would even have to think of that. His head movement to now has started doing yes and no like Americans do. So when it comes up and something else happens, when she asks, do you have any idea what happened? The head thing starts bobbling around again, just like he did in the first videos when he was talking about his wife. That's really odd, really odd. And then let's see, there's one. I think the, the passport point is he had thought of the phone. Hey, she could smash her phone and leave it behind. But if she's going to work, which is where he's claiming she's going to be, because she is an immigrant, she has to have some proof of her of her citizenship or residency to be able to work. He thought ahead, and he's ready for that. He's spitting it out. Hey, she left. She took her passport. That's how you know she's going. I don't think he necessarily means she's going to the airport. I think he just means she has to have it to move around America and to be able to use then he goes into, I thought the earlier one was some kind of pig Latin chant. This is some kind of pig Latin incantation. I have no idea what any of these words mean. Again, this is just rambling garbage. This guy's almost incoherent. I think you guys are right. Remember, we keep these in in the same chronological order so you can see decay. Imagine if this video had gone on for another 20 minutes where this thing would have gone. This is one of the weirdest I think we've seen in a while. Has she ever gone missing before? What do you mean? You said to me on the phone that she's left before. Yes. Talk to me about that. How many times? What were the circumstances? Did you call police? You no, know, at that time we never called police. You know, like at that time, altogether three times, you know, she went out. At that time, she has a demand because our parents were here. And then she said, like, you know, she want to send parents back. And then she want to stay only with three, um, our baby and then ourselves. Okay. But this time she didn't leave with the baby? No. Uh, no, before as well, like, you know, baby, you know, she always leave baby here. She didn't, uh, do not take the baby. She never took the baby? Yeah, no. Okay. Did she leave with any belongings? Did she leave with a car? Mm, no, most of the belongings are here, but like, you know, you know, her regular stuff, paperwork or stuff like that, you know, like, she usually put her on a bag, you know, stuff like that. Other than that, you know, most of the stuff are here. So somebody at the press conference today said that her passport and was yeah, missing. Because, you know, like a passport and then stuff like that because she started news off here and then usually she put on the bag and then passport is not here. Because passport, on the passport there is a stamp uh, which work as a work permit. That's why maybe like, you know, she took with her. I know some people got pretty upset with you today. What is your yeah. message to them? Just like, you know, be calm, you know, like help. You know, our main focus is help finding my wife and my baby's mom and then cooperate with the police and then, you know, like, uh, just go in a positive way. 
Do you have any idea where she could be at this point? Yeah, wherever, like, you know, I have doubted, I already, you know, personally, um, you know, I carry my baby and then personally I went there and then I already take a look. Where would that be? Um, Falls Church and then other places. Yeah. You mentioned to me on the phone that you're the one suffering tonight. You mentioned... Yeah, I'm, the su I'm the sufferer one. I'm the sufferer. My baby and then myself, you know, like, we are suffering the most. What do you say to her if she's watching this right now? If she's watching, come back, whatever is the issue, you know, like, we can fix it. Please. Did you guys have any sort of fight before? No. Nothing. No. Did you hear the people at the press conference today talking about yeah, how... I was there with the baby, but, like, I stay for, like, you know, uh, hour or something like that. After that, baby is keep crying, so somebody dropped me off here. You don't know where she is at all? No idea? No idea. Thank you for speaking with me. I appreciate it. Now, we want to do something a little bit different. Every now and then, we'll do something like this. And uh, Greg had an idea for this group of videos, because this this is a video that's separate than all the ones we've watched so far. But again, like we were talking about a minute ago, this goes even further into his uh, what's going on in his head. Greg, why don't you explain what's, what I'm talking about? Yeah, all we're going to do is this is a video where he is given the opportunity to talk to the camera and ask for help with his wife. And what we want you to do is to watch this and down in the comments, tell us what you see. Good topic for discussion, good topic for you to pay attention to. I think you're going to see a lot more than average people do. Would you mind sharing with us some words about, you know, getting and helping you out to, to find her, sir, flyer, or anything like that, please? Uh, what do you mean? Just like, uh, you know, obviously your your wife is missing, and, and I'm sure you're you're worried about it. And you know, you to kind of get the community to, to stay seeing her, to give a call, anything like that. Would you be ready to share some words with her? Yeah, either call to the police or like you know, any of our family or friend. Yeah, anybody. could you tell me that maybe just on on a mic, just to say like you know, reach out, please help us out. I'm sure you're you're probably really concerned after you know all these days. It's been 13 days, and I know you have a little baby. I'm a baby daughter. Yeah. So should I, uh, like, I don't know, like, should I authorize to come on the media or not? Like, I need to ask something and then I can come back on the media. Plus, you don't want to do it now? No. Okay. But, you know, I didn't ask them. Oh, so I didn't okay. ask them. So, like, you know, I'm not authorized or I'm authorized. I mean, I, I think it's up to you whether you want to get the word I'm, out. Plus, I don't know, you know, ask. You want to ask police? Yes. Okay. Because, you know, like, I'm not, other, other than social media, a lot of stuff I've been up. So, you know, like, a, this and that, this and that. So, you know, like, I don't want to say anything, you know, like, concerning either a police or uh, some... Well, we're only we're only using what's, what Elise has put out. You know, that she hasn't been seen. Right. So, so I don't want to disclose everything because, you know, the investigation is going on, so... Okay. Okay. Could you... I mean, one word, I mean, did you... Why, why did it take so long for them to put something out? I don't want to say... I'll do well, like, you can ask them, so I don't know... Okay. So I don't want to go that. Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, like I'm suffering some a lot. I know. Yeah. I'm, and we're obviously trying to do our part because it's been so long. Yeah. And we want them to help find her. You know, like yeah. you got. I know you have a ten month old. There's, a, there's a lot on your plate right now. Yeah. But you know, just anyone's message to help her bring her home if they yeah. see That's her. The message. That's the message. Yes. Okay. To help her bring her home. So you wouldn't want to just say. No, you hear? You know, that's the method. So, you know, like, I don't want to do something wrong, you know, so that, you know, like, you know, somebody say, like, you know, hey, why you this well, No, I don't want to talk to the media. Like, you know, I don't want to be the bad person. Like, you know, hey, why you talk to the I media? Don't, I don't, person. I don't, don't think it'd be, I don't think it would be bad just you, to say. You don't think, but like, you know, you don't know. But, but the message is, you want them that if you see her, if you see. Like, okay, it's up to you. Yeah. No, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be like, no. So, you know, I just don't know, I just know everything for us to go. Okay. Yeah. How are you about that? No, no, no. I mean, I, 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 again, I was, I'm not getting into anything that was on social media. Right. I wanted, obviously, just as a, as a husband, you wanted to be like, hey, I'm concerned about my wife's doing it. You had to do it like, yeah, but, yeah, it's not something. All right. Well, Mark, up to this point, how does this look to you? What have you seen so far? So it, it looks very much like other videos that we've seen of other people where they might well have done something bad. I'm not saying this person has done something bad. Uh, I think he's going to end up in court for sure, and I think a jury will decide what's gone on here. 
But, I mean, if you were looking for it not to look like you've done something bad, you'd have to take a whole new set of videos, I would say, for it to look like that. Chase, what do you see? Copy paste what Mark said. Greg? Yeah, I, every time I go to look for videos, I try to find something different than everything we've done before. This guy was a gift because we see him have one set of approaches for the police and trying to rationalize and socialize and a different one with the reporter. Of course, that's probably a couple of weeks later and things have cascaded, but it certainly does not look good for him. I'm with you, Mark. While we can't say anything other than I think he needs a good attorney. Scott, what do you got? I really like this one because we watch him slowly but surely fall apart. For the first one, it's not as bad. And the second one, it just gets worse. You know, and then and the third one that, that uh, you guys are going to watch, it gets even worse. So I, I really like this one because we get to see the brain separate itself while, from logic and everything else while he's trying to think up what to say. So he's using his brain for two separate, separate things at the same time, literally, literally trying to work two things at the same time. I thought that was brilliant watching that. All right, fellas, this is another good one. We'll see you next time. 